is Amazon too saturated? Can you still make money selling on Amazon in 2024? Yes and no. I am going to answer these questions and more in today's episode of the Amazon Files. So welcome to the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I want to formally introduce myself because I realize that there's a ton of new subscribers on YouTube. There's a ton of new followers and subscribers all over our channel. So thank you and welcome to the Amazon Files. I want to introduce myself very briefly. I am Kristen Ostrander. I am the founder of Mommy Income. I teach people to start and grow e-commerce businesses online. I've got over 20 years of e-commerce experience and I made my first and subsequent million dollars uh, selling on Amazon FBA with my unique bundling strategy. I love to share what I've learned online and teach people and be part of their success story for the people who are serious and want to build flexible income from home. So that's why I'm here. That's why I create videos. That's why I like to teach and train and just share with you what I've got. I've got some new stuff for you in 2024. I'm excited to do that. I have expertise in Amazon FBA, specifically eBay, course building, coaching and mentorship programs. And I just love to share what I've learned. So that's why I'm here. If you're new here, so welcome. I ask you to subscribe to the channel and follow all of our social media. That's at Mommy Income. And let us know in the comments or in the comments of any of our videos what you'd like to learn more about. I love to create videos for you and teach some training, some basic tips. And I also do some motivation, inspiration, entrepreneurial stuff as well. So watch for that. But I'm going to have multiple channels of, of videos this year doing stuff new. So if you're new, great. I'm so glad you're here. If you're not new, welcome to 2024. I am going to dig into our question today. I'm going to try to keep today brief. I am going to show some visuals. So podcast listeners, if you want to jump over on the YouTube channel, great. If not, just follow along. If you've seen or heard a bundle before, maybe you don't need the YouTube channel and you're just listening. But I just want to explain a couple of things and I'm going to show you a few things on my screen as well. So the question of the day, the question on the table right now, is Amazon too saturated? It is 2024, January of 2024. And I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say no. When I say yes, Amazon is saturated, what do I mean by that is every good seller with a product in a brand has heard of Amazon, would probably like to be on Amazon. That doesn't mean they are. There are multiple international suppliers, distributors, our, our Chinese friends and international sellers there. No harm, no foul there, but these are just facts that these are a lot of manufacturers have been selling direct to customers. Now they've realized how to use the Amazon FBA program in the U.S. And I think you've heard of Timu, right? Timu, uh, it's China's version of Amazon. They're really trying to do that, except for they're selling to us. Well, one of the ways that they fulfill is through Amazon. So because of that, they're using the Amazon platform to offer their goods, but then they also use their own platform. So there's a lot of things going on. So yes, for basic common items, daily, everyday, generic kind of items, so like everything you've ever heard of, like iPhones and iCases, just your basic stuff on Amazon like that. There's going to be some saturation there for sure. I mean, if it's if it's in the top 100 products, yeah, in a specific big category, those are going to be saturated ca categories, absolutely. But there's so many categories and so many products. They call Amazon the everything store for real. I can buy oil filters for my car, granola bars and toilet paper for my household. I can buy a brand new outfit, earrings. I can buy parts for my husband's truck. I can buy pool chemicals. <laughs> I can buy patio furniture. The list goes on and on. These are all the things you can buy from Amazon. So to say that Amazon is saturated, for anybody to say that, it's got to be like a joke, right? Like they're the everything store. They welcome new products and new brands. As long as you're compliant to all of their rules, they want you to sell there. I promise you. They're 40% fees that they like to take uh, on average. Yep, that's what I said. That's real. Does anybody ever say that to you? It's 40% almost of your fees nowadays in this 2024 as approximately 40 percent in fees that Amazon takes at the end of the day with all of the different fees it adds up when you're selling on Amazon. That's about the right number. I mean, you can cut costs a little bit and depending on what you sell, that's going to vary. But for the most part, you can expect to pay between 33 and 40 percent on average for all of the Amazon fees combined at the end of the year, at the end of the day. 
that's not why we're here, but I am talking like, I'm just realistic. I just want to tell you the truth. Um, why? Because I feel like you can succeed, um, but you can't succeed if somebody's lying to you. You can't succeed if someone's telling you all the sunshines and rainbows parts and they don't tell you all the parts and pieces that it's going to be required. So you come to the right place if you want the realistic truth. I will tell you that. It doesn't mean it's going to be sunshine to rainbows. It's just going to be realistic. And you're going to know exactly what to do and how to do it because I'll show you the way. I didn't say the way was easy or not full of obstacles. <laughs> I'll help you with those parts because there are those parts. That's realistic. This is not just a set it and forget it passive. Amazon is not passive income. It can be more passive over time if you have the right strategies in place. Yes, but there is nothing passive about it. Your account will need attention every single day, every day. It's not a set it and forget it. If you ignore it even for a day or two, some things can happen. Amazon is the biggest e-commerce beast that you can tackle. That's the good news is that if you start here or you're already doing it, all the other platforms are easy. And this year I'm gonna bring you more of that. Some other platforms of being like, okay, let's not start with the hardest thing sometimes if you're just starting out. Amazon is the hardest thing in my opinion so far with all of the e-commerce platforms I've tried and done and I've had major success with it. So yes, Amazon is saturated in a lot of categories. There are a lot of things that I would never branch into because I'm like, ah, oh, first of all, I don't want anything to do with supplements and ingestibles. My insurance company <laughs> definitely told me that if you're going to do that, your insurance rates are going to triple or even quadruple because people get sued in those categories. So I'm just, some things I stay away from risk factors. I actually have a high tolerance for risk, but the reality is that when it comes to my business, I don't want to take um, risks that are just unnecessary. It is supplements, topicals, things like that. I don't really like to sell uh, much of on Amazon because of that reason. So is Amazon saturated in some categories? Yes, that will be the truth. In some categories, good luck with that is what I would tell you. I'm not going to sit here and list all of them. It depends on your product. It always depends. Everything always depends. There's never a black and white answer when it comes to Amazon or e-commerce in general. So it's always going to depend. I mean, there's guidelines that we have and there's parameters where I would say, oh, don't buy anything that's this or don't go into this particular category. But, you know, like I don't love people like brand new private label, never really sold anything, creating baby products because baby products are the most recalled because they're the most dangerous to the most vulnerable. So I would never start out. Oh, I want to create baby products. I'm like, oh, that's the place that I would the least likely I would start or with supplements of some sort, proper testing and the FDA and regulations and all kinds of stuff like that. Like you have to be well insured and you have to have pretty deep pockets in some cases to even get stuff like that off the ground. I'm not saying it's not awesome. There's great brands out there, but there's also a lot of requirements and testing and documentation you need. And that would scare me. So no, thanks. There's easier places to start. So we're going to start there. Okay, so Amazon's not as saturated in some places. And some places you wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole, even if it's not saturated, because the barrier to entry is a lot of money and a lot of education and a lot of everything. So where is it not saturated? Well, the good news is if you have a brand, if you're on Etsy, if you are creating products or you want to do things a little bit differently with less competition, less overall risk, less overall investment, there's the gift market, there's new brands, your own private label bundle packages, wholesale bundles, new products. It's not saturated in all those things. People are inventing new products every day and they are product inventors. They're not, they don't want to sell on e-commerce. Some of them do, and that's great. But a lot of times they just want to wholesale their products. They want to get them into shelves in the hands of people. They're in the creation business, not in the marketing and selling business. So that's one of the reasons why people, companies, brands, they start with wholesale because they don't want to be direct to consumer. Now, some other brands aren't like that. That's great. There's plenty and plenty of products and services and ideas that you can offer on Amazon. So one of the best ways with all that is, is it too saturated in some ways? Yes. If you're trying to go the straight up wholesale route, which I makes money. What else makes money? Retail arbitrage makes money. eBay makes money. Amazon oh, private label makes money. Wholesale bundles make money. They all make money. Ask me how I know I've tried all of those things. I have done all those things at length, not just, oh, I tried it for a month. No, y'all, I got 20 years going into my 21st year of, of e-commerce experience. So I have run the gamut of doing all of these things. And it boils down to what was scalable, what was most profitable, most scalable, most business hands off. Because as you learn, you're running a business. If it gets as big as you want it to get, or depending on that, I actually am going to talk more about scaling back. Like you don't always need, bigger is not always better. Yours not always better. Just putting that out there. 
And so getting it to where you want, what kind of business do you, what parts of you do you like? What parts of the business do you not like? What parts do you want to be hands off? Are you trying to create a complete automated system? Well, there's never going to be complete automation. You're going to have to run your business one way or the other, but it depends on whether you're like the clerk running the counter or the CEO in the back office directing traffic, right? So it depends on what you want. And there's room for all of those from I'm a one man show, but I don't ever want anyone to be a one man show. Just saying that there's always a team you can build around you even in small ways um, because it's not efficient. You're not good at everything. Just putting that out there. <laughs> I'm not good at everything. You're not good at everything in a business. Even if you're going to run a business that's say 100K a year or 50K a year, that's like a full time job, right? You're going to want to have some people in place to do that, right? At first, your CEO and janitor, but then you've got to start having delegation in some areas because you're not good at everything. Hire out your weaknesses, perform in your strengths. You'll get there. Okay. Side, that was like a side note. <laughs> but all that to say, being in Amazon, what I've found after trying all the things and doing all the things, is the best way to eliminate the competition on Amazon was to create your own product in some way. So most people would directly go to a private label. That's like the jump that people make. Okay, the top of the food chain, go to private label right away to start there, come out of the gate like running. <sighs> I could lighten that to if you've never been skiing and you go on the Olympic hill and you try that out for the very first time. Y'all, that just doesn't make any sense. Just jumping right into that without any experience whatsoever. Now, if you have some experience doing these other things, then private label is a next step. So I did, st I have all of this experience doing that. And jumping into private label was really expensive and longer. And it takes a little less time now. There's shipping stuff and there's samples and this and that. But if you're really going to do it well and want to have a good and launched brand, you have to build the foundation first. You don't want your very first FBA shipment to be of private label products that you have never seen because you just slapped your label and your logo on something and, and put it together. It's not how we build sustainable businesses, right? Got to start a little piece at a time. It doesn't mean each piece has to take a year, right? Some people think, oh my gosh, this is going to take a year. So what? Do you think you are going to build a business in a few months? Who told you that was a realistic expectation? I mean, I've heard these stories. People are like, well, how fast do you think I can replace my income? Like by next year? I'm like, are you kidding? I don't know where these lofty ideas come from sometimes. These real unrealistic expectations that you're going to go from zero to, to 100K in, in a couple months. That's not going to be profit if you do that. It's possible if you have enough to put in. You get what you give when it comes to business. And if you have something to put in, you can reap what you sow from that and make profit and move on. So trying all these things and realizing what is my answer to my Amazon, my first Amazon million, am I really breaking through what I, what I would consider that like breaking through even at 500,000 doing it on Amazon was a combination because I did the retail arbitrage thing and I loved it. Not going to lie. I liked to shop. I liked it for a while until I started doing it like 10 hours a day, like five days a week. And then, and then I had to ship it and did all that. Once it got to be like that, it was a prison, but I loved it up until then. It was very profitable at the time. It's becoming more difficult now. I mean, remind you that I've been in this for 20 years. So I've been doing retail arbitrage since 2008, 2009, I guess, 2009. Did thrifting in books first and then got into what I would consider arbitrage, I think in 2009 early. So yeah, that's a long time. And in the first, in the beginnings, I did love it. It was the money was crazy good. The margins were amazing. Amazon was still newer and growing into the beast that it is now. So retail arbitrage is still possible and still profitable. And I still, I don't have anything negative to say about retail arbitrage other than have realistic expectations going in what that is. You will be shopping a lot. You will be looking harder and longer for products than you used to. And when you find them, you're going to have to gather them over and over again, because the deal today is not a deal tomorrow. It's just gone. You get a lot of clearance stuff. You get a lot of random markdowns or like maybe the box was damaged and you can, there's a lot of resale opportunities in retail arbitrage and even opportunities create new listings and things like that. Amazon wants more product. So that's good. Problem is it's a lifestyle and it's gotta be something that you want to do and love to do. And you might for a time, but then eventually I was like, there's gotta be an easier way to make this money. This money's great, but like, 
I'm busting my tail 24 seven doing a lot of this stuff. And that's when we started turning corners. So all that to say wholesale again is a volume game. It's like Walmart. It's like they sell a million products a day at 10 cents per profit uh, per item. Even if it's an iPhone, they're making 10 cents. Even if it's a grocery item, they're making 10 cents and they make, I mean, this is a generalized exaggeration uh, to point at volume versus margin. That's why I have wholesale bundles because bundles are my margin game. I sell bundles because private label number one was fine, but it was also like feeling like putting all my eggs in one basket, taking $10,000 and investing that and having tied up for almost a year plus extra shipping on the back end, like $15,000 and a year or more of back and forth and creating a product and launching a new brand was not something I could afford in the beginning of my journey. So I, did, I, I tried that out and it just didn't, it didn't go the way they said with private label and all these different things and all the different fees that you just didn't know about. And so I'm like, easier way is take wholesale, which is like a volume game and buying wholesale and buying in bulk, just like every other store in the world does, right? Like Target and all these other stores, they send buyers to trade shows. They pick out the products they want to carry for this year. They order them and they put them on Target stores. That's what they do. So that's what you're doing too as well, wholesale. But remembering that not everything translates as well online as it does like in person. So certain things are weird to sell online because it's like, this is more of a, I got to touch it and feel it kind of thing for some customers. I mean, eventually everything's going to be online and most things are, but the wholesale is selling a lot of items at a discount plus factoring in Amazon fees and everything else, which is great. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't like how much Amazon fees have gone up in the past five years, but I understand it. it's just part of doing business. And if you want to do it on business on Amazon, that's what you're going to pay. So I factor that in into my margins, but I would rather sell less volume, like selling a piano at like a 500% markup is different than selling like the Walmart mentality, right? So I look at it like that. I'd rather sell less pianos at more of a margin than a million products at a 10% profit and just do volume based. I realized that after I was doing wholesale for a short time and I did retail arbitrage, which has great margins, but getting the inventory is part of the problem. You have to go pound the pavement in Michigan. It's six months out of the year. It's just crappy weather. And I don't want to go out in the ice storms and haul things in and out. And I got tired. I'm tired. I'm getting older. Like I just, I didn't want to hustle like that anymore. So I, that's why I was looking for a change. Got into wholesale. Wholesale was like volume. Sell 10,000 units of this one thing at a dollar a piece. And we made 10 grand. And I'm like, that seems harder. Can I sell $60 items with a $20 profit margin per and then just sell less of them? Enter wholesale bundles. So combining private label with wholesale is what wholesale bundles are buying at wholesale sources or manufacturing yourself. If you're if a self manufacturer in some sort of way, a lot of people make their own products. Combining that together, highly complementary items. You're not bundling just whatever, whenever to keep people off your listings. God, please don't bundle like that, please. We don't bundle that way. So highly complementary items sold together in a way that brings value both to the customer while also benefiting you as a seller. That's what a bundle is in my definition. And I kind of made it up. So there you go. Bundling. So when you're thinking about that, I'm going to give you some examples. I'm going to show you my screen and I'm going to give you some examples of a couple of bundles and what they look like so that you guys are aware. We're just going to run through these really quickly. So those that are watching or you're on the podcast, you're not going to see these right now. But for my friends that are watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see this. Okay. So this is an example of a wholesale bundle. It's like a puppy lovers, new puppy supplies kit, right? Set of little bowls, basically all the things that you need when you get a new puppy for the very first time, like a new puppy kit. So this is an example of a great wholesale bundle. Trying to sell all of these things individually on Amazon, you might make sense on the dollar. The people still sell dog bowls and leashes and brushes and these little puppy pads and all these different things separately for sure. But when you combine them into a bundle like this and charge $50 for it, you're increasing your margin because your average sales price is higher, which means less fees. Amazon takes a bigger chunk out of something that's $10 than something that's $50 because the fees are percentage based, but then it's also size and volume based. So it's really, it, it's interesting. So this is a nice bundle kit here. Here's another um, option that you can see. This is like healthy snacks. This is a healthy snack variety pack for adults, a gift snack box for adults. They have their own brands. 
the sweeter side candy company or whatever and they have their own branded boxes they like what's in here with all these different things great pictures it's a great listing so kudos to you guys i love your store and this is a great product this is a great bundle and i loved how they utilized all of the this is a really well built bundle right here and i love it because it follows all the rules it doesn't set a step into anybody's they have some branding he stuff here because that's what's included in the bundle but they're not utilizing that in their title so that's a good bundle in general sorry just had to say that okay here's another one that's just uh it's it, instead of just buying a ukulele because you want to buy a ukulele you wouldn't make money on picks and maybe just the tuner itself and all this stuff so you combine them into one package of uh, something that a beginner ukulele person would want hey i want to learn how to do this i want to store it well this is a cute little bundle and it's a six $36.99. So it's like putting all the stuff together. You're not going to make much money on a ukulele uh, strap by itself unless you're a guitar store of some sort. Picks and things like this. So because they combined all these things in it, the customer receives that perceived value that they're getting more for a decent price and they love that on Amazon. And the seller's making money because they have a markup on all of these items and together they could be making even a dollar a piece on these rather than something with the smaller stuff. And maybe the big um, profit here here is the case. But um, either way, these are examples of, and here's like another one as well. These people have a variety pack and we're going to talk a little bit more about this in the next section of this episode. But I just wanted to show you guys really quick what bundles actually look like. What are the examples of it? And I just want to go through some of the benefits. That's what this show really is about. Is Amazon too saturated? Yes and no. Yes, in some major categories in very traditional ways. If you're just straight up trying to go find wholesale and using all the software programs that everybody else uses to like run data through catalogs, like you're going to end up with the same products that everybody else is ending up with. And you're going to have saturated items and you're going to waste a whole bunch of time, months, energy, looking for the same products everybody else does and the same methods. And you're going to get really frustrated and wonder why you started in the first place. Ask me how I know, because client after client comes to me and says, oh, I've done all these things in all these ways in the same ways everyone else is doing them. The same exact ways. Oh, okay. Well, it's no wonder you're running into saturated dead ends because everybody else is doing the same way in mythology and getting stuck in the same place. But wholesale bundling is it. I've tried all the other things and realized that because of this research method and actually digging through and doing the hard work ahead of time, which no one wants to do, this is how you can become successful, looking for all these things up, up front. So reasons that bundles are better and not saturated is because more and more sellers are jumping onto the Amazon platform and they're picking out the low hanging fruit, the stuff we just talked about. If you go to other uh, programs, I'm not dissing any of this, by the way, there's tons of great education out there for Amazon sellers and all, all of the different methodologies to selling wholesale, private label, arbitrage, thrifting, like drop shipping, which I hate because it's against Amazon's rules when I mean, you can get in big trouble, but all these other things, there's training. So there's competition and people do what's easiest first. So they use OA tactical or uh, online arbitrage, tactical arbitrage to try to find stuff on websites and everybody buys those things out and things like that. And they, a lot of the same methodology is taught over and a lot of people latch onto that because it's easy, low hanging fruit, clearance items when it comes to retail arbitrage or buying lists or bolo lists and things like that. Great things, but the more people have their hands on that, the more and more the pool gets saturated. Creating your own bundles like eliminates that because you're starting from scratch doing something but not from scratch. You're starting from wholesale catalogs and products that are already available and you're combining them in a way that makes a lot of sense to the customer and also to your bottom line. Um, especially if you add your own item and if you're making your own tote bags or your own earrings or your own, you have your own brand of candles, you can make gift boxes, put your can branded candle in there with some other products and you've got like the coffee lovers gift set that comes with a coffee scented candle and some of these, I mean, that's what we teach. So creating your own bundles can really just add your own flair to it, but also zero in on the keywords that people are looking for so you don't get overlooked. This means no price tanking, no races to the bottom, no tons of dead inventory because somebody else got a pallet of the same clearance you did and now no one's making money. When you combine products from different wholesale sources, you add your own item in or a custom labeled item that you have. I've done this with one item in a bundle, the cheapest item, mostly the most inexpensive, I guess, and put my logo on it and put my brand on it. And then everything else is just generic kind of in the thing. But because that one thing has my brand, it goes with the set. It just happens to be this item is branded. So it's really impossible for people to compete. That means 100% of the buy box, 100% of the time. 
No one's on your listing. You have your own brand. They cannot do that. Also convenience. Why this, the other reason bundles work is for convenience. We are one click society. I just showed you guys the puppy stuff. Do you want to individually add all that stuff to your cart? First of all, you don't even know what you need half the time when you're a new puppy owner, right? You don't know necessarily that you need all that stuff. You just look at that kit and you go, oh, for 50 bucks, I can have all this. I'm in. That's how customers make decisions, just like you do. Oh, look, I could buy puppy bowls and this leash and this and this, and that's adding up to a hundred and some dollars. Or you're like, oh, look at this puppy starter kit. Now I just add it to cart. Like 80 some percent, I, I think is the new statistic from the end of 2023 of, of households in the US at least have uh, Amazon Prime. One click society, people want things fast. They want it now. They don't just want Prime Video. They want their two day free shipping. They get to spend less time looking for stuff when they have stuff in bundles. Prime members value their time. They are paying $130 a year to have stuff two day free shipping. Some people live out in the boonies. Some people are busy. Some people hate stores. Maybe they're immobile. There's so many reasons why people pay for Amazon Prime, but who cares? We know that this is the kind of customer they are. They value the fact that they can buy and uh, items and have them delivered to their door for whatever reason they want them delivered to the door and they value that. So just like the ukulele example, I, I'm, I'm also a customer. That's one of the bundles that I found because I was looking for that for my daughter and I had no idea how to buy a ukulele, but the bundle made it easy for me to be like, oh, look at this. It's cute. It comes with the case. It comes with all this stuff. Buy it now. I didn't even, at the time, didn't even price check. I was just like, that seems like a great deal for all that stuff. Buy it now. So that's what customers think too. When they're typing in their search, their items that they're searching for, and they find a single unit item, say just a ukulele, but then I saw the ukulele and then I saw this, then you realize, oh my gosh, this is, bundles make so much more sense. You don't always have to be the cheapest price either. You, but customers are very aware that they're getting 10 items over here and two items over here and it's about the same price oh this one's 37 this one's 39.99 so you can actually charge more for your bundle but people will pay more because they know they're getting more so it's like a rationalization they do a price psychology expert on here many moons ago and she just kind of enlightened us about that like people actually make decisions based on that and they judge value by price as well if something's dirt cheap people are going to think it's cheap and they don't necessarily want to pay cheap it depends on the product, especially if it's something they want to last. Okay, another way that bundles really help is creating variety. Amazon customers love variety. They go there because they can't find it on the Target shelf. They can't find it at their local grocery store. They can't find what they're looking for. And so they go to Amazon because Amazon has everything. Why? Because they have an unlimited virtual shelf where they can show you all kinds of products and people like you and me stocking the shelves. So Amazon customers like, we like options, right? We don't want just one color of something. We want to go online and see if they have it in, in yellow because that's what matches our decor. Creating bundles gives customers more options to choose from. I mean, have you ever searched on anything on Amazon and not found it? Like, how frustrating is that? So this isn't even on Amazon. It's like really hard to find at that point. So we love our variety in our options where I might like bright, bold colors and you might like neutral colors and you want them all in the same. Or have you ever fallen in love with a shirt or a pair of pants and you're like, I want one of these in every color. And then you start taking to the internet to be like, okay, where do they have these in blue, red, all kinds of things. So the bundles are great for putting things together like that, even a variety of the same t-shirt. Okay, somebody like a Hanes t-shirt with a pocket, that was my dad. Every time he wore a t-shirt, it was just a plain Hanes t-shirt and had to have a pocket. And he had one in every color, it seemed, because that's all he really wanted. Just interesting. Uh, customers love bundles because they love variety. They like to get more than one. If they like something or they're like, oh, I like this brand of hot sauce. Let me see if this company makes any other sauce. Because if they make sauce this good, I want to try all the varieties. There you go. There's another bundle. Another reason that bundles work is because they're lower risk. You can start bundling right now from your own store. Going through your own store right now, products that you've sold already, looking at what sells really well with those items. No matter what sourcing method you use right now, you can begin bundling. You can do it retail arbitrage bundles, wholesale bundles, um, even bundles from your own private label store. I worked with one client that sold her own makeup brand and she had eyeshadows and lipsticks and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, do you have a bundle pack at all of anything? She's well, we're considering that. And I'm like, get a, a decent makeup bag and offer all your products in the same color and one bundle and sell it for 
or a little bit more or a little bit of a discount depending and you can bundle from your own store the cost is low we recommend you starting with this 12 units or so you don't have to break the bank selling bundles is lower risk even this i can show you this uh, um, option here is um a dollar store bundle and this is just a prime example of what you can do to create bundles right this is a dollar store bundle except for look at the variety this is hand towels and they create one listing and then they have all these varieties of all these different hand towels that they can get there's teddy bears and there's everything from roosters to sunflowers to just a cute little these are all keywords right lemons just pink flamingos so then this is all from like dollar tree and so they're using all these different varieties it's not a, a ton of money but because they're just low-hanging fruit and easy to do this is retail arbitrage um bundling and you can actually buy wholesale from dollar tree i don't know if you guys knew that or not um, but they, if you start buying cases or case quantities, they get on their website and have them delivered to a local store or even delivered to you if you want to pay shipping. They give you discounts for that. So you can absolutely do wholesale bundling even from the dollar store retail arbitrage bundles. That's how I started out way back in the day. It's a little bit easier to do it on your own brand. If you have your own brand, it's just a little bit easier and you're protected a lot more from like hijackers when you do that. But it's possible to start there. Start where you are. Use what you've got. You don't have to grow and scale and go from zero to a million. Like that's not how we do this. Small steps. Dream big, step small. Read the book. Okay. And the last and final reason I want to share with you of why this works and why it's not saturated in this particular way. I mean, I can't speak for all the other business models. I know people have a really hard time with regular wholesale right now because of AI making it so much easier to do very data-driven research. If you have enough money, you can pay enough to get what you want from wherever. And because of AI, it's so much easier to do research now. But that's a, that has advantages and disadvantages. And the scalability is when you realize you can scale, when you can do things and teach it to multiple people and you can continue to, to making it work. But adaptation is another thing. You have to adapt to all the changes on Amazon and you have to be on the up and up of your business and scalability. Retail arbitrage is profitable, but it's hard to scale. It's hard to scale. You cannot duplicate yourself. You can hire shoppers and things like that, but the process itself is just really hard to scale on a large level. It can be scalable on a small level, but it, it is profitable, but it is just, it's a lot more work. It's a lot more hours. It's a lot more physical work, right? You have to go out to stores and scan items on shelves and put them in your cart and take them home to get the best deals. That requires coming and going and a vehicle and the stamina to do all those things. So it's harder to scale. With the one-off type items, you have to put so many hours to source your products. With wholesale, there's scalability because you can order multiple quantities from multiple places and even overseas to save money and all kinds of stuff like that. However, with wholesale, that comes in with the low-hanging fruit. With all of the AI and all the different softwares and stuff out there, it's really easy to just plug a 300 page catalog into a database and click some rules of I want to buy this and this and I want you to scour the internet for these things and it comes back out in a couple hours with everything you ever wanted on a sheet. Well, if you can do that, other people do it too. And if they have similar rules to yours, it's going to spit out the same type of products. Those people are going to go buy those products. And pretty soon you have yourselves a race to the bottom. Okay, now this person is selling the same exact item as me or they created their own private label brand out of it. And now there's 14 different kitchen tool sets of the same exact style and shape. And maybe the only variation is the color and the fact that mine is Kristen's Favorite Things brand and yours is Joey Smith's brand. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to duplicate what's out there. You've got to be different in order to stand out in these marketplaces and it does it's not difficult to be different but it takes some doing things differently than other people with wholesale bundles you can scale and protect yourself against these competitions and these um, hijackers and people that just want to copy paste repeat you tell me anybody who's copy paste repeating and really just killing it out there not long term maybe for a short term but then they get shut down they don't care about the rules they try to think about fast money fast money don't win Slow and steady wins the race. A little bit of fast money ahead of time is good, but those are the things. And with wholesale bundles, the scalability of using a prep center. I can have all my bundle components and my custom packaging sent to a prep center. They assemble all of my kits and all of my bundles for me, put my brand on them, send them to Amazon, and guess what? 
I sit here and create bundles on my computer or in front of the pool or in a couple of weeks when I'm in Puerto Rico, except for I'm not taking a laptop. <laughs> I'm not working while I'm on vacation. But I, I, you, anywhere in the world, you can create your bundles and have them shipped to a prep center and the prep center can do the work for you. So you can be hands off. You can have a VA employees, you can have prep centers and you don't have to do this traditionally. You do not have to touch and see your products to sell bundles on Amazon. So with those five reasons being the scalability, the low risk, creating variety for the customers, convenience for the customers, and getting rid of the competition on Amazon, bundles just make sense. And they made sense for me, dollars to cents, all the way up to seven figure plus. So people were asking me like, oh, how did you grow fast? I didn't grow fast, I grew steady. I started changing methodologies. We went from thrifting and retail arbitrage to then um, doing more arbitrage and eventually doing some wholesale and then realizing wholesale and, and private label attempts. And then finally realizing what if we do both of these, combine some of these products together and make a little bit more margin. Wholesale bundles were born and there it stands. And I have multiple streams of income, but that is my number one primary bread and butter um, is my Amazon store with my wholesale bundles. So I teach people to start and grow those. Our wholesale bundle system is available mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe. You can get our free training there, learn a little bit more about it and jump into wholesale bundles. If you've never sold anything on Amazon before, we do have another um, option for you. We have what's called our SFT course. It's called Start FBA Today. And I always recommend if you've never sold a thing on Amazon before, you take that beginner course because you're, you don't want to jump, you, you need to build that foundation we talked about. And that's part of the foundation that you need to build. So mommyincome.com forward slash start now is how you can get that course as well. And y'all, I thank you so much for listening to this episode and learning a little bit more about me and what I do with Amazon that's different than everyone else. And just updating you on the new and fresh things going on there. Make sure you subscribe to um, the podcast and the YouTube channel, all of our socials at Mommy Income, and look for some new and fresh stuff regarding eBay and how you can make money with that and with the state sales and some other things coming up this year so i'm excited for that and i'm excited for anyone who's new here mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe you'll get the free training and you'll be plugged in with us so you can learn a little bit more about what we do thank you for listening i know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing and i don't take that for granted so thank you so much for joining me on the amazon files and see you same time same place next week with a new episode